CNN. Biden's comments about pandemic widen public health split over how U.S. should respond to COVID-19. I love this. They say even as the U.S. prepares for a potential winter surge of COVID-19, President Biden roamed the cavernous halls of the, of the Detroit Auto Show for an interview on CBS's 60 Minutes and gesturing to the mostly maskless attendees told the nation the pandemic is over. We still have a problem with COVID. We're still doing a lot of work on it. He told Scott Pelley, but the pandemic is over. He repeated. Let's give a round of applause to everybody. Yeah. Uh, it's all over. Yay, everybody, we survived. everybody That's can fine. go home or or leave your home because yeah. the pandemic's over. It's just so crazy to me to hear to hear this. And then you know, I go out and I still see people wearing masks in places that don't require them. Yeah, I, they must not know that the pandemic's over yet. Maybe maybe they needed this. Maybe maybe now Joe Biden's sweet whispers will uh, uh, assuage their fears. It will. A lot of people wait, unfortunately, for better or for worse, they wait for the official word. And this is the most official word you're going to get. Anything Biden says is the top official in the United States. Well, well, I wouldn't worry uh, about what the top official says. Mm -hmm. Since last year, they were saying that there was going to be a severe winter of illness and death, and they were absolutely wrong about it. I was on this show last year and I said, COVID's over. It's it's done with. There's no way you could return. I was looking at the data. I was looking at the graphs and, and that absolutely happen. All the restrictions. And when I mean COVID, when I mean this kind of uh, health mandates and these emergency issues, all of that made absolutely no sense. And we have slowly seen them dwindle because everything that they promised that was going to happen with this virus last winter never happened. And this thing was very interesting because there wasn't a speech. There wasn't an official declaration. There wasn't a parade. There wasn't even a banner. It was Joe Biden walking through a car show nonchalantly talking to a TV show that aired his comments five days, five days later saying COVID it's over, yeah. which is absolutely crazy. The one thing that the article gets right is that it said it, it, it will be a seasonal, you know, the winter is coming and, and it is seasonal. The flu has a season. Lice cases go up in September because all the kids are back in school. So when they're like, well, we're headed towards a season of COVID, it's like, yeah, we're also headed towards a season of colds and a season of flu. A lot of our illnesses are seasonal. Let me, let me read this quote. Quote, in a week, that's Twin Towers, right? It's a 9-11 week after week after week, said uh, said Greg Gonzalez, an epidemiologist at the Yale School of Public Health. I, so, I just want to point out that people die from like congenital heart failure and from peanut allergies and other things. And it seems like the a COVIDian, that's the word, right? It's like a cult almost. These people are like hyper focused on one thing. It's like, bro, look at flu deaths, right? Yeah. I think they're about probably half or so. But if you're really saying it's a 9-11 every week, okay, look at car accidents. Like how many car accidents are there every week? Someone want to look it up? Yeah. My, my point is, you're only talking about one thing. Are we really going to shut down the world because there's a thing mm -hmm. that causes people to die? That's there, 107,000 people overdosed on fentanyl last year and divided by 52 weeks, that's 2,057 per week. So, you know, that that's another oh, thing that, would, that, that, is, that is a Twin Towers every week. How many car accidents per year? I've got 38,800 per year. So what is that? 38,000 38, divided by 52. How many fentanyl was there? Um, 107,000 died wow. of just, just fentanyl. So we're looking at 746 deaths a week in 2019 from car accidents in the United States. Mm. What about like heart failure? That's, oh, that's, I think that's, that's the, the number leading one. cause yeah. of death. Yeah. yeah. Heart disease. Heart uh, disease, huh? Heart disease. So we got we to gotta shut it all down. You know, we got to well, shut we it all down. And, well, no, we got to do it again because people have heart disease. And to shut down the world for heart disease means shut down the gym. Right, shut down yeah. all the gyms, Lock the parks, them in their rooms. The, <laughs> make them make them order Uber Eats. No, I get it. It's, oh. it's contagious. Oh, per day. So it looks like COVID is about seven times as many uh, deaths as there were car accident deaths. Yeah. Uh, but what about heart failure, heart disease? I'm still looking for that. What number. about obesity? Mm, How many people yeah. die every year from obesity? I think that that's not the, ever really the cause. It's that'll bring on something else that will kill you. Yeah, and it tends to be a comorbidity. Cancer deaths per year. 300,000 people die every year due to obesity. Whoa. Wow. And it's, a, it's an epidemic. They say really obesity is. epidemic. Yeah. So 6,000 like 6, a day. 600,000 die of cancer every year in America. Whoa. Wow. I got to say, we had Drew Pinsky on the show Whoa. last Friday, and he's a you know a doctor, Dr. Mm -hmm. Drew, and was talking about Paxlovid and how people are having not breakthrough cases, but uh, rebound cases, which I think, I don't know exactly what a COVID rebound case is. Are you guys- It's when you test oh, negative oh, and then you test listen. positive again. So I think what's obesity, happening- yeah. I'm sorry, oh, I'm is sorry. that COVID is still here? Like I can feel it. I can mm. feel my back in the same place where I got really sick before. I can see that it's. I can still sense it, but I have an immunity built up now to it. Oh, so oh. yeah, it's going to be here like the flu virus. Obesity is two 9/11s per week. Apparently now wow. we are going to be measuring deaths in 9/11s yeah. because that's what. And I, I, I know it's like it's kind of silly, but 
they've been doing that since the beginning of COVID. Like when COVID deaths were really high, they were like 9-11 every day. And mm -hmm. it's like, is this a unit of measurement? I think Bill Maher made a joke about it. Yeah. Like, are we using this as a unit of How measurement How many Reichstags now? Well, it's, be for it's the, because you can day. point to the 9-11 people and see who supported them, who sympathizes with them. And if you don't believe in COVID and if you don't believe in vaccines and if you don't believe in masking, so you're, you support the terrorists. Yeah. And and in 9-11, and for those of us who, who remember when all of it happened, were you even born when 9-11 happened? When 9-11 happened, if you were like, well, I think this is ridiculous. It was like, oh, so you want the terrorists to win, huh? It's like, no, I don't want the terrorists to win. I just don't think this is the right approach. Well, the CNN had a ticker on their show. Their producers were celebrating and happy that the numbers were going up because the more death, the more fear, the more viewers that they had. Yeah. And this was released by Project Veritas on how essentially they loved that ticker. They loved those numbers. They loved celebrating death. And they loved the trauma because uh, essentially what we're dealing with when we're dealing with corporate media is a lot of trauma-based mind control. Yeah. And this is, again, a lot of sensationalism, a lot of... Uh, you know, doom and gloom, a lot of severe winter illness of death. None of that happened. They were absolutely wrong. This this statement is very convenient right before the midterms. And I think that yeah. has a lot more to do with it than actual science that was, again, bastardized from the very beginning. Remember of this. A, lot of, a lot of people pointed out, including this show, right after Biden was inaugurated, how the, 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 the CNN ticker death thing disappeared from their screen, right? That was in the bottom Chiron for, for, for a year. And like the, a week after Biden got in, I was like, yeah, we don't need to put that number yes. anymore. Ease Even though more gas. people... Yeah, even though more people died under Biden, which is a silly statistic, right? But but it is a true one. You know, more people died under Biden with COVID than under Trump. But they were like, ah, we don't need to talk about statistics anymore. That's important. You said with COVID. And we, we're going to have to continuously remind people that there's a difference between dying with COVID and dying from COVID. Because if you get into a car accident and you had COVID in your system, you might die with COVID yeah. from a car accident. But they'll still clock you as a COVID death because you yeah. had COVID in your system, as opposed to COVID making you cough up blood. Have no head. And they're like, what did he die? Yeah, well, he died of COVID. It's no, like, no, he no, doesn't no. have a head. They would say he died with COVID. Died with COVID. Yeah. He'd be yeah. like, he's a COVID death. What was the COVID cause? Death. Which is very, very, you know, that's that's malicious in my opinion to the, say mm. to, to the, make the people driver think it was, was COVID decapitated, mm. uh, but he did have COVID. But he did have COVID. What about the passenger? The passenger was bifurcated <laughs> right down the middle. <laughs> But he had COVID. So, so there were two mask? COVID deaths because yeah. each half yeah. had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> we found we found two just, incomplete just bodies. I don't and the head was works. not wearing a mask. Oh my gosh. Yes. I know. Which proves it. <laughs> this is like I'm dazed this from is, this, this last this, three years. I'm just still in awe, shock and awe, man. This is like two years, our is eulogy for the pandemic. Yeah. Because I, 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 you know, these these uh, uh, COVIDian people, they won't, they don't want to give it up. They love being the Karens wearing the masks, screaming at people. They do. Shrieking, but it's done. It's been done for a while, but this is it. Joe Biden came out and said it. This is what we need now. Do you find there, folks... There's, there's still people who are facing mandates, lockdowns, mm. things like that, restrictions. It's time to start filing lawsuits. Do you absolutely, find folks absolutely. There's still There's still teachers being fired today. Today, 850 unvaccinated teachers and, and paras were fired from the New York City education system. Uh, there's still an FDA emergency authorization for a booster that was just tested on eight mice. There's still people losing their jobs within the military because they didn't comply with these mandates, which are which are absolutely nonsensical. So people are still being fired by this. Why? When the president said it, says it's over. Ian, yeah. you mentioned that people don't die of a obesity they die from something because of obesity that's called a comorbidity and people are pointing out that's literally how they define covid deaths yep as like people will get sick and then they die from comorbidities like what is it like 90 some odd percent of people had some kind of comorbidity and obesity was a large component of Huge. that so here's the important <clears throat> factor is that obesity deaths and covid deaths i imagine have a large overlap yeah, and and age also, and then they started hiding that data. How, how many people were over the age of seventy five? And it's tragic, right? We don't want our old people to die. B people forget the original reason why the vaccines were rushed is because it was supposed to save old people. And then for some reason it went to let's get all the seniors vaccinated. To now you have to get your fifteen year old kid vaccinated. I was like, what? Well, I thought this was for old people. And the old people, if you look at it, didn't have bad reactions as much to the vaccine because it was made for old people. But for some reason it, it disappeared like that. That, that thinking of, I remember my parents were happy because they were the ones at risk. Dude, the idea of vaccinating you to keep Luke healthy is insane. Absolutely. If it's like we live in the Middle Ages and there's no, and we're all like got bacteria eating our skin alive, then maybe but we would consider that. I do want to point out, I think people need to understand the, the, the full context of what happened at the start of the pandemic. After a while, we started seeing different strains. You know, we get to like Omicron or whatever, and it's getting weaker and it's weaker. It's like people need to understand the alpha strain was really scary. 
the, the scar tissue and damage in people's lungs. Mm -hmm. We had Dr. Drew on, he mentioned the spike protein was, was causing microvascular damage. And then it was inhibiting nutrients and you know oxygen and stuff to get into parts of the body. In the early days of COVID, you could see the scans of people's lungs. It was really, really bad. That's kind of, you know, I, yeah. I don't know. I think we got Omicron. Is that what we got when we got sick? Uh, yeah, I, think it was Del Delta. I think it was Delta, but it, there was, oh, yeah, there was right also there. a lot of malpractice inside of the hospitals that were doing things that they later found out was absolutely wrong, especially when it came to drugging a lot of the patients and then giving them particular medicines well, on, that gave on, them organ failure. Are you talking about malpractice or are you saying error? Like, um, you could. You, I don't know how you want to. I guess categorize it, but but there was a lot of mistakes made early right, right, on right, in right, the right, hospitals. Right, that's what I mean to yeah. say. Like we didn't know what we were doing. Mm. Like, there's a difference between a doctor screwing up and us being like, this is the best thing we could think of. Yeah. But I got. I gotta say, like, I think policy wise, it was a total and abject failure. Yeah. But, Fauci but, should have been fired immediately. Absolutely. That's Trump's fault. But any criticism was automatically censored. Any anyone speaking up was automatically shut down. And there was practices that were done that, that people saw as a mistake, especially when it came to the ventilators. People were saying, hey, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Maybe we shouldn't be, uh, you know, knocking patients out and giving them drugs that give them organ failure so their bodies can't fight it off. Maybe we shouldn't be incubating them. And, and that was a big argument that should have happened publicly, but it didn't. And the policies continued on to the detriment of a lot of early patients. Thank Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.